Hotel Hill, otherwise known as the Gatwick Private Hotel, is the festering flop house and flea pit in Fitzroy Street that grows steadily more notorious as the rest of St Kilda grows rapidly more gentrified. The Gatwick is where cockroaches, junkies and jailbirds go to social climb among regular down and outs, living from pension day to dull day. How terrible is that? I mean, what an awful thing to say from one human being to about another. I mean, you just wouldn't, you wouldn't even think that. You just wouldn't want to think like that. I think that's just shocking. And that's where the bullying comes in. But you wouldn't want to, if your kids said something like that, you'd smack them across the back of the legs. Newspapers and all those sort of things should be... You know, everybody talks about bullying, but they're the biggest bullies out. You know, and yet they're supposed to be trying to set an example for children not to bully each other. And yet you've got people, that's all they do. They can never say anything nice. They said the Gatwick was a magnet for Melbourne's down and out crooks. They head there as soon as they get out of jail, one said. People need somewhere to go when they get out of jail. And hopefully the whole jail system means that they've rehabilitated. But I mean, if you put them out of jail and then put them on the street, on the street with nowhere to live and make them feel that they're horrible people, obviously they're going to re-offend. Hey, listen. Do you mind if we ask you a quick question? Yeah. If you yeah. didn't have Gatwick to come to out of jail, yeah. where would you go? The street. Yeah, that's, that's just it. The street. If it that's what we just said. If and her sister, I'd be on the street, bro. Yeah. 100%. When we were 14, um, we started working here full time. Dad got permission to get us out of school because Mum was sick. And um, pretty much been here ever since. That's been here every day since. It was an immense job for a 14 year old. There was always uh, an element of violence. Yes. St Kilda was a very rough area yeah. at that time. Actually, um, probably rougher than it is now. Mm. Probably ten times rougher. Yeah. You do have your days that make yeah. you think twice. Yeah. Um, but then you have hopefully more days that make you happy. So, yeah. yeah. Some di- days that can be an absolute nightmare. That you think, oh, my God, I'd love to see the end of the day, especially when something, when you're getting blamed for all these things that you have no control over. Because most of the fights aren't from the people that live in the Gatwick. Generally, they're from people outside. So the people that live here, I mean, this is their home, so they're not going to do anything it. to get them evicted because the, uh, most of the time they have nowhere else to go. The Gatwick is St Kilda. You know? I mean, some of the stuff you see on the internet about the Gatwick is a load of crap. They misrepresent what goes on at the Gatwick, and what does go on at the Gatwick is generally 99% of the time is not a tenant of the Gatwick. It's the ones that we fight to keep out. It's the ones that we call the police on. It's the ones, you know, but that kind of never makes it to print. I don't use drugs. I don't drink. Yeah. I, I smoke cigarettes. That's it. Yeah. And I work for the Gatwick. Somebody's got to be here for the fire alarms and the smoke alarms because they're constantly going off. With the amount of drugs in the building, it's quite, quite how, something. How much drugs are there in the building? Always a huge amount of drugs in the building, always. Literally any, any drug you want, even if it's not here, generally somebody will know where to get it from. And it's the same people that come through all the time, you know. Disappear for months and then they come back. Just depending on who it is, you know how bad a night you're going to have. I mean, I can sit here watching television uh, at four o'clock in the afternoon and listen to what's going on outside. And I know from the noise outside what my night's going to be like. There's lots of fights. The police have been called in three or four times. And then once the police have, and they've only got to be here for 10 minutes, walk the floors once, all of a sudden the place quiets down. Uh, but that's, that's, that's the Gatwick, that's, that's what they do. Uh. Ice is the most dangerous drug I've ever seen. As I said, my bent sense of humour came out one day, I was defrosting a freezer. <laughs> and a big piece of ice fell out and I walked up the hallway and I'm yelling, free ice, free ice, to see how many doors would open. <laughs> I hear voices. A few other people have heard voices and have gone to the doctors, but it's the voices inside. I'm telling, not in my head, in here. I'm telling you, there's spirits, there's spirits here. 
night times the night when they want to come. It's freaky, I reckon. I think they've lived there all their life, they've passed away, they're stuck in four walls. You know what I mean? They can't leave, they're stuck in this vicinity. They can't move out unless somebody moves them on. And that's only if they want to go. Yeah, no, actually, I feel mum in the house all the time. Yeah. She was very compassionate to people that were had very little because she came from um, a very war-torn Malta to Australia and spent the first few years with nothing because there was no unemployment benefit then and there was no, no jobs around that was in the Depression. She couldn't speak any English. So as soon as she came to Australia, she had triplets. Mm. And she'd already had two little children, so she's ended up in a country where she knew nobody or couldn't speak the language with five little kids. So, yeah. Well, my father slept at the first... When he first arrived, he actually slept in the Flagstaff Gardens in a tree and ate from the Victoria Market. And uh, then eventually um, he got a job and then he saved up enough money to get a room somewhere, five kids and a couple in one room. And then eventually they saved up enough to buy a house. Yeah. And, and they turned could, that into a boarding house. They turned that into a boarding house. So we all pretty much lived in one room and mum rented out the other rooms. And then they saved up enough to buy a second boarding house and then it just went on from there. Everything is beautiful in its own way because we see Gatwick as beautiful. He's depicted all the people that were actually here at that time. Yeah. Because, like, we used to have a fellow that vacuumed the floors and he was always vacuuming something other than what he's supposed to be vacuuming. So in this picture, he's got him going up the side of the wall. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Yvette and I when we were little together. Oh. And this is Rose and myself just outside the back of the Gatwick when we were about 18, I think. Yeah. And that's us together again at, I think, we're about 50 there. Yeah, actually, that looks pretty good. People don't take seriously what Rose and Eddie have put on offer. Very big-hearted people and um, a lot of, in my opinion, a lot of people take advantage of that because when you take into account, it would have to cost $1,500 a day easy just to open the front door before you make any money out of the place. And people don't realise that and they don't pay their rent. They always have other priorities rather than rent. It's either the casino or drugs or, or something else that they need to buy. Usually if somebody's got an excuse for not paying their rent, they'll come and tell me first. They'll try and get me to smooth the path out with Rose, so, you know sort of to back them up, guarantee that they're going to pay it the next week. Yeah, I think it, but you have to have that good cop, bad cop relationship, otherwise it just doesn't work. You hear that? You hear that? Yeah. Knock it off. That's what I do. <coughs> Keep the peace. I'm the, I'm the fixer. Well, I got death threats all the time, you know what I mean? I, well, I got stabbed in the face with scissors, but yesterday, oh, Tuesday. So it's Saturday night. Yeah. Went right through, cut my tongue. <laughs> I'm trying to bring respect back to the place. What do you think of the Gatwick? I love it. It's a beautiful building. How long have you lived here for? Oh, 41 years on and off. I'm the longest non-paying resident. Yes, for sure. But I work, and I work and pay for that, that way. This is Mr Frago. He was with us for 42 years. He used to always go out for lunch on his birthday. And when he passed away, we kept his room empty till his birthday. Till his birthday. Yeah. Yeah. And then we had lunch. And, and then, then we had lunch. Then we cleaned the room. Yeah. Well, see, Cindy and who's that there? I can't see. I don't remember her, Cindy. Cindy's always around. Yeah. I keep coming back because, yeah, the girls are very nice. If, if it wasn't for the Gatwick and the girls, a lot of people be on the street still. And a lot of people might be dead. They're very... Very kind-hearted, but if you get on their toes, that's it. They chuck you out. Or, yeah, I like them. That's why I keep coming back here. Because it's my life. Did you find yourself homeless if you my life? Ah, uh, uh, drugs. 
I'll tell the truth. And I don't care if you don't like me because I use drugs. And that's the only thing. A lot of people just come and go, you know, like they'll come and stay for a while, then go off and then come back again and go off and come back again. Or um, some of them get government housing and then find, you know, they've been on the waiting list for ages, finally get it and then find it's not what they were expecting, it's too quiet or... Too, too lonely. Too lonely. Yeah. And then they come back here because there's always somebody to chat to. Yeah, that's a beautiful photo. Mm. Sometimes yeah. dressing up as a woman, it looks so beautiful. Yeah. You would be so impressed even to, to think you looked half as good as him as a woman. 40 to 80 years ago, there was one of these establishments on every corner. And St Kilda back then was, was famous for, for the pimps and the prostitutes. And, and you would need an establishment similar to this, not saying like the Gateway, but very similar to this, to, to cater for all um, ages and sexes, uh, for, for people who are vulnerable to uh, homelessness and um, you know, the wisest advice that I could give you for living on the street is don't get too comfortable. I don't have to dress up in, in women's clothes and go to work anymore and sell myself. Um, I, I'm quite, um, you know, um, I'm just happy that I don't have to do any of that stuff anymore because I'm nearly 50. I was a sex worker. Okay. Used to, I, I worked every day for like uh, 20 years without stopping. Really? Yeah, so it was like um, uh, clockwork for me. It was mm -hmm. clockwork for me. Did you think it was a hard job? Well, prostitution stole my youth. Um, it's a real hard question to answer. Similarly, I was sexually abused from like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, and continuously. And when it didn't happen, there was something wrong. Um, and so it was just something that I just got used to, you know. You know, I, I told my aunties and my uncles before I came over here that I, I, um, I forgive them and I'll never forget what they used to do to me. But um, I want to go to Australia and make a better life for myself now. And I just needed you to know that. Dear Yvette and Rose, I have just seen your story on Sunday Sunrise and you are both amazing and inspirational. It would be wonderful if more people could be as non-judgmental, generous of spirit and actively demonstrating of love for others as you are. The good in your hearts shines through the passion and joy you have for what you do. Wishing you continuing happiness, health and prosperity. With love, Jay. You know that, and Rose, they're like my two mums and my two sisters, and no one can take that out of my heart. I've lived there all my life since I was a little kid, as far as I can remember, and they used to pass me and feed me as well. And they still today, they give me a bed. How cool is that one for a street kid? There is a big family in the Gatwick. Okay, we get some blowings and we get some shit. Okay, we get the stabbings, we get some nothing nasty crap. But that's just part of the life, that's how we live. I've had dramas, I've had everything. I can tell by the scars on my face. I've been through a milk, but I still stand tall and I'll fucking talk for all my people. Amen. They don't usually fit the criteria of everybody else's um, standards. I mean, we take them in and we love them just like anybody else. Um, but you can imagine if they went to a real estate agent and said, you know, I have no income, I have nothing, I have this and that, and I have these problems, um, the, they'll just be turned away. So yeah. they'll just be, um, they wouldn't even get their foot in the door. They, they have no compassion, not only not to house them, but even just to look at them or tolerate them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, That's they, why they have such an issue with Gatwick being in the middle of this new gentrified area. They don't want to look at it, but we were here yeah, always. Gatwick's yeah. always been here and they should have noticed before they moved in because mm. it's not going anywhere. They're quite happy to send, you know, $50 overseas to help somebody overseas, but when it comes to helping somebody... In their own backyard? In their own backyard, they're just not interested. Mm. Yeah. We don't discriminate. If we've got a bed available and you'll come through the door, you're welcome to stay. This is a poem by Wendy Butler. Blame it on the Gatwick. Homeless camp in Fitzroy Street, blame it on the Gatwick. Rubbish thrown in Jackson Street, blame it on the Gatwick. Keith Richards falls down from a tree. Football fans doing a spree. St Kilda player hurts his knee, blame it on the Gatwick. Hoons in the heat drive round the street, blame it on the Gatwick. Local girls work their beat, blame it on the Gatwick. 
public transport running late, how it's reached his use-by date. Mary Cahos waits its fate, blame it on the Gatwick. Nightclub revellers urinate, blame it on the Gatwick. Drunken hoons regurgitate, blame it on the Gatwick. Huey's restaurant closing down, Burrito's cafe leaving town, St Kilda's score is going down, blame it on the Gatwick. Thank God we've got Gatwick. Yes, otherwise they'd have nothing else to blame. <laughs>